I am no maester to quote history at you, your grace. Swords have been my life, not books. But every child knows that the Targaryens have always danced too close to madness. Your father was not the first. King Jaehaerys once told me that madness and greatness are two sides of the same coin. Every time a new Targaryen is born, he said, the gods toss the coin in the air and the world holds its breath to see how it will land. How fitting those words are for us today as we begin a CK3 Game of Thrones as the Mad King. Ares the Second Targaryen, known for burning his courtiers alive for no apparent reason and complete madness, honestly, believing that the... Uh, that he was hearing voices in his head telling him to burn them alive. Burn them all, he said. But today, let us see whether we can take the Mad King and somehow make him a semi-decent ruler at least, and at least defeat Robert the Usurper's rebellion. So today, we're going to try and take the Mad King and solidify the Targaryen dynasty on the Iron Throne and make sure Robert Baratheon doesn't get his drunk hands on it. We're going to have our filthy fire and blood-laden hands on it instead. <laughs> so here we are, King Ares, the Mad King of the Iron Throne. He has some pretty atrocious stats. 2, 6, 4, 17, and 10. He is paranoid, yep, wrathful, sadistic, and arbitrary. And he's a flamboyant trickster. He's a knight, of course, in a pet... In apetitic, let's ignore that word, reclusive, <laughs> uncouth, fire obsessed, of course, comely, and a lunatic. So, this is going to be incredibly fun. But first things first, we have to defeat the foolish rebellion that has set out against us. And I'm hoping we can do it with one fell swoop and take out Robert so there's no more rebellion. To go for. So let's have a look at our lifestyle choices. We are going down Seducer Perk. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Let's go for the Dread. And uh, we'll, we'll take Seducer, but that's not brilliant. We'll also take a Patron Aspect. And I'm thinking for this, what we're going to do, because we're not going to lead in battle, we'll go for the Natural Dread and uh, Hostile Scheme Success Chance. That should really help us out. We can also hold Court... And this is going to be interesting. So let's hold our first court on the Iron Throne. And how fantastic does this look? There's Lord Jamie. There's Lewin of Dawn. There's Jonathan Darry. And there is Barristan the Bold. What a man. Brave, honorable, diligent. Oh, what a fantastic character. And he's strong. And he's a Kingsguard. But anyway, let's hold court for the realm of Westeros. Here are petitioners. A peasant man from the city of Savagon is brought before me, and no matter what the guards do, he will not stop dancing, trailing blood from mangled feet. I mean, he doesn't look like he's dancing right now, I'm not going to lie. I cannot cease, my lord. None of us can. Not until we collapse. Please help us. My high septum. High septum? <laughs> high septum, the fat one. Yes, insists that it is a curse sent by the seven, who are one to punish the peasants. Dancing sounds delightful. We can give them a dancing plague, or we can uh, pray for deliverance, and the seven and one will surely dance, uh, surely answer. I think we'll take the uh, the piety. Doesn't sound like something we would do as the Mad King. My lord, I represent the religious community of Blightshaw. While rummaging through our modest archive, we have come across a very peculiar book. Okay, a long lost vault of knowledge. Yes, I will add that to my collection. Of course, I am the king after all. Master Regal, who has clearly been working himself up about something, greets me. My king, the dogs of Gold Dog, Gold uh, Goldguard Heights, think they are better than us. Cracking their haughty jokes each market day. I mean, that doesn't really sound like something I would be honestly interested in. Um. Uh. Yeah. Get them to duel. <laughs> Commander Manly wins the duel. They both hate me as well. <laughs> Let's have a look at our... Uh, actually, at our court and at our vassals. And uh, Mace hates us. You know, Doran doesn't like us. Rhaegar, of course, does. Lord Renfred doesn't like us. Yeah, no one likes us. 
Look at this. Everyone hates us. Everyone is going to be trying uh, to go for us. But we do have Rhaegar as our heir. And Rhaegar is absolutely fantastic. Of course, he's got Aegon. And he's got Rhaenys as daughters uh, and son just at the moment. Prince Viserys is over here. We've got no Daenerys just yet. Um, but yeah, let us see whether we can. We've got Queen Rayla as well. And she's okay. She's melancholic. I mean, I would be melancholic if I was married to King Aerys. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But let us rally the men for this war. We do actually have quite a bit more troops than the uh, Prince Robert's Rebellion. And we are making a lot of money. So what we're going to do is we're going to get probably some armored horsemen. Because they are a really good unit. Uh, and we're going to go increase that to size 2. And then we're going to go for some dragon keepers. Let's have a look at these guys. 35, 33, and 15. They're quite decent. Uh, yeah, I think dragon keepers. That's probably a good option. So let's go for that. Dragon keepers. Let's increase them to size 2 as well. And yeah, we'll get them all raised and ready to go. Here comes the war. It seemed like it may be time to meet Robert in battle. He has come across into the Crown Lands, and he has not brought his whole army with him, the fool. So it is time to smash them. And we have our Lord Osmond of Briarcrest, who's actually a brilliant commander. And is it time to just destroy Robert's army? Yes, come on, the boys. The Battle of Strawberry. Varys has discovered a spy, Naaman. Hmm. Lord Varys. I love Varys. Naaman was caught searching for secrets. Let's, uh, let's talk to him then. Naaman, I want to, you know, burn him. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that's what we do. Burn him alive. Yes. But look at this. Fantastic. Absolutely destroying this army. Lord Renly is dying. Oh, glorious. And the first blow in the war is ours. We are winning. So we are starting to lose a little bit of money. So I think, you know, we're going to get a bit of a, uh, of a loan from the Iron Bank of Bravos that will hopefully tide us through and keep us from going into too much, you know, debt, even though we are going into debt to them. But we shall see whether they accept our petition. So I think I think a loan of 500 gold is enough for us to keep us going throughout this war. And if we need to go again, we will do. And you can see we are just ravaging the Stormlands here. All the way down to Storm's End. And Storm's End will soon be ours, boys. We shall destroy Storm's End and ruin them once and for all. We can pay our debt to the Iron Bank of Bravos. I don't think we can do that quite yet, but... There we are. Uh, we have seized Robert's house down. Very good. So I think the plan for now will just be to continue sieging down the Stormlands. And to see how we do. We've got so many armies in this area. It's, it's probably quite a good idea. We can do it quite quickly. They might try and re-siege back Storm's End. But how long? Oof, that's not going to take long at all. Hmm. I think we need to go and fight them there. Yeah, we've caught them. Good. Oh no, Rhaegar! My son and nephew, of course. <laughs> Rhaegar has died? No! He's been murdered. Who is now the heir? Aegon, who is one. The line of Targaryens. <laughs> Looks like it may be broken. Oh, they're already betrothed to each other. That is horrible, but <laughs> okay. Can I have more children, please? Please. Um, okay, yeah. We are so weak right now. We really need another child. We really need some more Targaryens to come out of the woodwork. Okay. The battle for Storm's End. The death of a dragon. My heart sank even further than it already had once I received the news of what happened to my son. My poor dearest boy, my eldest son, taken from me as so many of my offspring have been. Does the depravity and injustice of these treacherous dogs know no bounds? Can I not keep any of my family safe from the endless onslaught? I must. I must act. I must keep my family safe, for clearly none of my underlings are able to. 
I will send them to Dragonstone. Yes, Dragonstone. None shall be able to harm them there. Though the question remains, should my late son's own children be stowed away to Dragonstone with my wife and son? Yes, of course, I will send them all to Dragonstone. That will keep them safe, hopefully. <laughs> Unless Varys gets his darn hands on it. What is loyalty? My guards swiftly attend me in the throne room. Bringing news. Lord Paramount Tywin has brought the forces of the Westlands to the gates of King's Landing to protect me from the treasonous bastards of Baratheon, Stark, Arryn, and Tully. Uh. Oh, I mean. We, we know what happens if we let him in. Just another traitor. Tywin, you fool. You will not be allowed in. Oh, no. Things are just going from bad to worse. My wife has now died as well. I might not have loved you, yet I feel you're passing more acutely than I ever thought possible. You were always there, my constant companion. Did I take you for granted? There are so many things left unsaid. How did she actually die? Well, she died in childbirth. Uh, for Princess Daenerys, of course. And, you know, I think we, of course, are going to educate Daenerys. <laughs> Very nice. So now here we are fighting Robert once again. Our reinforcements are in. Mace Tyrell is coming. And it is time to beat Robert into the ground once again. We just need to keep winning battles against him. I don't think anyone's going to siege down the Red Keep. And hopefully we can capture him at some point. We just need to destroy his whole army. Or ideally kill him and that would be great so we're going to follow him all the way back to his retreating point uh, which is down here somewhere and we'll keep on following him along and hopefully we can keep catching him and just eventually get to the point where we can kill the fool that is robert and hopefully capture him and destroy him once and for all here come all the troops once again come on boys kill him come on Ah, oh, yes. We are wounding a lot of their knights, which is great for us. And, uh, yeah. Oh, did we destroy the army? I think we might have stack wiped them. That's pretty nice if we did. But let us keep on fighting and see what happens. Where is Robert's army now? There it is. Only 61 men left in the army. But he does keep getting more and more troops as we are slowly losing more and more. We're not under siege up here yet. It's more around the uh, Riverlands. And that is fine. I'm not too bothered about you losing this land up here. It's not very important to me. Um, you're not terribly important to me. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> you know, Robert is the main focus. And if they decide to come down and um, support Robert, we probably would lose. But... You know, they're not right now. No one likes Robert, apparently. I almost feel bad for Robert now. We are literally chasing him around the Stormlands, trying to capture him. But he's so quick. I don't know whether he's an organizer or something, but he is so quick. Look at him go. Go on, Robert. Come on. Where is he going? There we are. We've got to fight now, finally. And once again, we've just absolutely dominated him and his army. Fantastic. Let's get back into probably our own land up here to try and get a few more troops. And, you know, replenish our army somewhat. And then we'll go after Robert once again. Impossible to injure. Do not fear, I scream from the top of the building to calm the people gathered beneath. I cannot be harmed. I jump gracefully from the ledge and laugh as my stomach tingles from the fall. 80% chance I stick the landing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't know what's happened there. <laughs> now we are ill. And unfortunately, Pycel is the maester that might help us out here. So I'm not going to go for anything risky. I don't trust that blighter. A little brighter. Well, well done, Pycel. Don't poison me, please. <laughs> so now we have the forest of impaled people. And... <laughs> Yeah, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. Oris and a few commoners should send the message. Um, the Red Keep. I, I envisioned a forest of impaled lowlifes and traitors surrounding the Red Keep on all sides. I sound very much like Joffrey, don't I? Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go. So now we actually have a murder plot against Robert. And I'm hoping we can actually murder him. That would be great. Get Varys on the case. It's only a 31% chance. But it's worth trying. 
nonetheless. Try anything to just kill Robert once and for all. We've beaten his, ba his army so many times. And we're slowly, slowly just building up war score. But it's just not quite enough. Not yet, anyway. And he keeps escaping. You can see him absolutely charging away from us every time. Uh, he just escapes. He's so fast. Is he an organizer? Let's have a look. He is an aggressive attacker. Oh, he is an organizer. That's why he's so quick at getting away, which is quite annoying. But what can you do? I'm fast as fuck, boy. Still fast as fuck, boy. So, you know that little loan that we took before? <laughs> I don't think the Iron Bank's too happy that I just defaulted on it. <laughs> My consternation growing line by line. It seems that Iron Bank will no longer seek repayment from me, but instead will resort to less conventional and, I must confess, altogether less pleasant means. <laughs> Starts a war against us. Eamon! <laughs> Eamon! The black brother Eamon! The blind man! Eamon wouldn't be happy about that, but I mean, that should be an easy war, surely. Um, so because of the Iron Bank, we just basically became disgraced. <laughs> I mean, there's no other word for this man. And don't worry, we will get married, but we will get married after the war. We're too, you know, we've got too much going on right now to get married, so... <laughs> so you can see that the Riverlanders have managed to come down from on a high. Down into our heartlands around the Red Keep and King's Landing. But they don't look like they have too many troops. So I'm going to wait for all my reinforcements. And I think it's time to take the fight to them as well. So boys, I think it's time we go. A toast. Okay, 54% chance that Robert drinks a poisoned, some poisoned wine. How ironic. How ironic. This would be fantastic. Are you ready, Robert? Are you ready to die? Come on, 54% chance. He survived the poison. <laughs> oh, no. Unfortunately, one of Lord Paramount's Robert's scullery maids helped herself to a sip of the drink. We couldn't plan for this, Paris. <laughs> no. No. Oh, we're going to keep on going, though. We've got to. But if not, we will, uh, you know, we're going to go and take them out. In terms of the amount of troops we have, I think we've got slightly more. It's going to be close. But come on, boys. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Yes. We are winning. We are winning. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's go. I think it's time to take the fight to the darn Starks and destroy them once and for all as well and send them back to the deep dark north from whence they came. Send them back. Yes. Oh, that battle was enough. 100% guys. We have won the civil war. It was a heavy toll. We lost both our wife and our son, Ares, uh, sorry, uh, Rhaegar. And now we only have Prince Viserys, who is a callous, stubborn, arbitrary, wrathful man who's bossy and a squire. Oh, God. The Targaryen name is just not going to live on without infamy for quite some time. <laughs> but it is time. Enforce the demands. We imprisoned Tywin. Quellon, Walter, Hoster, Eddard, and Robert. It is done. It is done. The War of the Usurper is done. Yes. Glorious. Disband. And let us see the war's aftermath. At long last, we have achieved victory in the face of those who sought to rebel against me and disrupt my righteous rule. Now that the traitors are within my grasp, the time has come to choose what fate shall befall them, whether to show them mercy or to punish them for their transgressions. I mean, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> we are going to punish them. So, Lord Pir Paramount Tywin. I mean, Tywin, you are a sca scandalous bastard. <laughs> we could kill the whole house. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, 
Now let's think, what would the Mad King do in this situation? And uh, <laughs> I think that would be the option. Um, yeah, we're not sending Tywin to the wall. Tywin's my favorite character, but I'm sorry, Tywin. My will be done. Lord Eddard. <laughs> oh, Quellen of the Iron Islands. Yep, my will be done. My will be done. <laughs> oh, this is glorious. Don't think I can't smell it. Ah, oh, Jamie Lannister, a nobleman, has fulfilled his solemn oath and has departed this world. I mean, I... <sighs> Let's have a look at what chaos we have caused. Oh, dearie, 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 dearie me. Dearie, dearie me. So what it seems to have done is killed the entire house. Apart from a couple of them, I'm not sure why Kevin has survived and Tywin himself has survived. So has Eddard. And I'm assuming so has Robert as well if we come down to um, to Storm's End down here. Let's have a look. Watch. If we go to the title history, you can see Lord Robert has survived. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my days. This is just brutal. Stannis has been mur everyone's been murdered apart from them, and I think that is fitting punishment. And I believe that is punishment that King Ares <laughs> would dole out. But let's find ourselves some loyal, loyal vassals, shall we? Rather than the fools that uh, pretended to serve us before. And we'll start with the North. And you know, the North is very honourable. Um, there's very honourable people in the north. And I believe these are my only two uh, settlements up here. Winterfell and that one. We could give it to someone, you know, <laughs> very honourable. But I would quite like to give it to someone who likes us. But let's, you know, give it to someone very trusting, like Lord Roos, the Leech Lord of the Dreadfort. I think he's an honourable man, isn't he? He's a very honourable man. So, uh, let's give it to Roos. Big Roosy boy. Let's go. Oh, so here we are. Lord Paramount Roos, the Leech Lord of the North. Fantastic. Now let's do the same for the other lands and see who we've got available to us. And I think there's really only one person that deserves the Veil of Aaron. And of course, <laughs> it's got to be Littlefinger, hasn't it? What an absolute legend. The Veil of Aaron. You can have the Paramount seat. You can have all of this. There you are, little finger. What a man. There we are. And I hope you like me, sir. I hope you like me because you might become my spy master. But there we are. Lord Paramount seat of the Veil. In terms of the Riverlands, we know there's only one man. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Look, Walter. Oh, he, he looks so fucked. Look how fucked he looks. Oh my days, he looks so hot. Oh, what a legend. Let's go. You can have the... <laughs> we, of course, are just giving out the titles to all the most trustworthy men in the realm. The men that have served as well. Oh. Glorious. And I think for the Westerlands, there's only one option for us. And it is Sir Sandor Clegane. <laughs> Not Gregor. We're gonna go for Sandor Clegane. The paramount <laughs> of the Westerlands. He is a burned, skilled fighter, administrative courtier, Herculean knight, forder, and a skilled tactician. He's just honest, cynical, and vengeful. Of course. And you can have Castamir as well. Take all of this land, my friend. It is what you deserve. <laughs> there we go. Sandor Clegane, the paramount of the Westerns. <laughs> and I think for the Stormlands, 
there can be only one. I know she's a little less trustworthy than Walder Frey, Roose Bolton, or Sandor Clegane. But, you know, yes, I think that's... A, <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think that's right. I think that's right. There you are, Brienne. You can become Queen Brienne of the Stormlands <laughs> at the age of nine. Fantastic. So we did want to give the uh, the Iron Islands to Euron, but of course I murdered him. So <laughs> what, what can you do? We'll give it to House Harlot instead. I think they're, you know, trustworthy enough anyway. There's Lordship of Pike and the Paramountcy of the Iron Islands. Very nice indeed. There we are. Fantastic. So we've sorted out the realm. You can see it's now spread between the Reach, Dawn, Stormlands, everything else. So we are back to being normal. We do, however, have the uh, Dragonstone. But I'm happy to keep that. I know we're above our domain limit. But that'll be fine, I think. In fact, I think giving a Viserys Dragonstone might be... The best option over here. Give him Dragonstone. Let him learn how to become a leader on his own. Because that always really worked out for Viserys, didn't it? <laughs> so I've been looking around for wives. And of course, you know, ideally we'd want a fertile wife to have more Targaryen children. But in order to do that, pretty much the only thing we can marry is our own children. I think that's a bit too far, even for Aerys the Mad King. I mean, if we look at our dynasty right now, so if we look at the Targaryen dynasty, there are only six living members. Although Rhaenys, my granddaughter, but she is betrothed to Aegon, of course. Um, so I think, you know, there's only one option. <laughs> oh, she won't, she won't marry. She won't marry, no. So I have scoured the lands for a wife, guys. And unfortunately, there is no, no wives available. So unfortunately, when you don't have access to a wife, who do you go and see? The man that has a million children. And I can't believe I'm saying this. But the Targaryens, we are going to marry into the phrase... The very honourable, very honourable phrase, of course. And there it is. We are going to marry Malara Rivers when she comes of age, of course. <laughs> a Targaryen and a Frey on the throne. This is surely the most cursed Game of Thrones timeline that could possibly exist right now. So now that all the landed characters have been ransomed for a little bit of cash from the dungeons, try and bring us back to stability, I think the rest of the characters will be burnt alive. Yes, <laughs> we are the Mad King after all. So we have a daughter, finally. Danis Targaryen, one of our other daughters. Um, and yeah, we can see we've now got quite a, We've had quite a few children and we are surviving the Targaryen name. And I think the realm is stable, guys. I think it's stable. So what I'm going to say, I think we're going to leave it there, guys. We're going to leave this episode here. If you do want to see me continue this and try and keep the Targaryen name going, but we've kind of, you know, we've kind of got to the point now where we are stable and there's not much else for us to do apart from just, you know, sit down. I, I'm sure it's it's... It's stable-ish, okay? Roos is in a massive war for his territory, and he is losing against Lord Willem of the Barrowlands' Liberty Wall. The Liberty Walls aren't too bad, though. They basically just remove tribal uh, crown authority, so it's not too bad. And it looks like Brienne is not in a war, but other people are. What is this war? No, oh, she is in a war. Lord Aemon's claim on the Kingdom of the Stormlands. Lorm Aemon of Picarock, why do you have a claim on the Stormlands, my friend? <laughs> I don't know. Did you, did you, you know, buy that claim? That's quite weird. Why? You're not a, uh, you're not a Baratheon. Let's have a look. 
Yeah, the, the High Lord is not a Baratheon. That's quite weird. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to leave it there. If you did enjoy it, please do like. Try and get 100 likes for another episode where we'll continue the Targaryen legacy in CK3, A Game of Thrones. We did defeat Robert eventually. And now we are the glorious Mad King on the throne, uh, on the Iron Throne. Fantastic. So guys, like and subscribe. That really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.